Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to video number 28 in our IC7300 from A to Z series. Today we're going to be looking at the display settings and also the clock settings. I do want to mention before we get started that uh, in the video segment tonight you're going to notice that I'm using a new rubber tipped stylus. That was something that showed up on my doorstep from Amazon as a gift from one of you viewers. And I just wanted to acknowledge that and let you know how much I appreciate it. As always, there's a lot to cover, so let's get started. And we're going to take a look at the display settings. These are pretty straightforward. And a lot of them are pretty minor, but in the interest of completeness, we're going to go through them all. So, to get to the display settings, we're going to press the menu button, and then we're going to press set, and then display is at the bottom of the first page, so we're going to go to display, and let's go all the way to the top of the display settings here. So, the first one is the LCD backlight. That one, as you would expect, is pretty straightforward. Uh, it just sets the brightness for the backlight. The default is 50%, and you can set that wherever is comfortable for you. The next one down is the display type, and you have choices A and B. A is the default, um, and actually, let's just go back to that real quick. So A is this whole background um, and if I don't have the scope on or if the scope's not on the whole screen, the background of the display is black for the A type. So if we go here and we change the type to B and then we exit out, the background is sort of a bluish gray. Um, so just personal preference. I find the meter a little bit harder to see with that background. The frequencies are fine, but uh, uh, it's up to you. So I'm going to set that back to A for myself. Display font, and you have two choices here, basic and round. And again, let's just go back and remind ourselves, this is the font only for the frequency numbers. All of the other, uh, maybe the memory, we'll check. Um, but all of these other letterings, all the, the font for all of this stuff is fixed. You can't change it. Uh, this font that it talks about is, for, is primarily for the frequency. So we'll change it to round. And now you can see that they're much rounder. And I don't know if the... Uh, yeah, I guess the uh, memory number also gets a little bit rounder also. So it's the memory number and the frequency for the font. Um, and again, for myself, I'm actually fine with the basic. Meter peak hold, um, and there's really not a very lengthy hold on this, but um, I have it off right now, and we'll go back and take a quick look here. And actually, while he's talking, you can see the meter, and uh, there's a lot of noise on the band, so it isn't going to go down a whole lot here when he gets done. Actually, let's put the attenuator on, and that'll help a little bit with that. Um, and maybe that was a little too much attenuation. So, there you go. Anyway, you see there's no peaks shown on the meter. So, let's go back in. We will turn meter peak hold on. And it really only holds it momentarily. I'm going to turn that attenuator back off. And you see the little the peak number, the, the little peak bar stays for just a second after um, they finish talking. It's really not a very lengthy hold. But that's the meter peak hold function. And... Let's keep going on the display. We'll go down to the next page here. Memory name. Uh, the default is on. And I'm going to uh, turn it off. And if you have it off, when you are in memory mode, and I'm in VFO right now, so let's go to memory mode. 
and let's get to a memory that has something in it. With it off, there is no name displayed here. There is only the frequency. Uh, even if you have a name set, I do have one set in that memory, I happen to know. So we'll turn it on. And now you'll see up here, uh, if you recall, a number of episodes ago, I showed you how to set the memory channels for the 60 meter fixed frequencies, and I named them 60 meters dash one, dash two, and so the memory name shows up here. Frankly, I don't know why you wouldn't want to have the memory name displayed because it's, it's not really in a part of the display that interferes with anything else, but you do have the option to turn it off. Uh, and then the next ones here, the MN, this is manual notch filter, uh, the width pop-up on and off, the bandwidth pop-up on and off, and the filter bandwidth on and off. And I think that's, yeah, that's the last of those. So for these three, you have on or off. I'm going to show you all three here with them on. What they're talking about is if I put the notch filter on, automatic notch is a on here which comes up first if I go to manual notch it says mid so it shows you when you first go to manual notch the bandwidth that the notch filter is set for um, and then the passband tuning it's talking about if I turn the knob here you'll see the the bandwidth pops up on the screen when I turn these to tune it. Now you can also see it change up here at the very top. So you can see the bottom end and the top end change up here, up in the very upper part of the, part of the screen. So um, you can see it up here even if this doesn't pop up, but that's that pop-up. And then the last pop-up is the filter and you can change the filters. You've got filters 1, 2, and 3. We've gone through those in the past. And you get this little pop-up that briefly shows you what the bandwidth is of the filter that you've chosen. Um, and then again, you may recall, just for review, if you press and hold, it goes into the filter screen, and these will stay on here so you can see what's going on if you want to do some uh, lengthy adjustments. But um, when you just touch it, you get those briefly on the screen. And those are the three pop-ups that they're talking about. So let's go in. I'm going to turn them all off. Sorry, I'm kind of switching back and forth between my pointer and my finger here. So we'll turn off the notch filter pop-up. We'll turn off the pass band tuning pop-up. And we'll turn off the filter bandwidth pop-up. And I'll show you the difference here. So now if I... Go to manual notch, you'll see it shows auto notch, and then it'll show manual notch, but you didn't see the little box that showed you whether it was mid, narrow, or wide uh, for the bandwidth for that. And if I turn the passband tuning, you don't see anything pop up in the middle of the screen here. Again, you can still see it on the top. You can see things change as I change it. And if you press and hold it, uh, it does go back to the default, and that does seem to make it pop up, even though the pop-ups are turned off. And then finally, the filter widths, if I just change them now, you'll see I get no pop-up here. Um, since those pop-ups are only a, you know, a second or maybe not even a second, I honestly don't really see too much value in that, but maybe if you are heavy-duty into contesting... And again, I sorry, I pressed and held the filter, and then that brings the filter settings up. So even with the pop-up off, that still functions. If you were uh, heavy into uh, contesting, here, let me go back to uh, BFO here. Um, and let's go to the fixed. And maybe you were looking for signals, and you didn't want anything to pop up in the middle here, and, you know, you had a... A very busy time going on. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of grasping at straws a little, but I don't really see a lot of uh, uh, a lot of difference, frankly, between the pop-ups being on or off in terms of uh, in terms of them being 
annoying if they're on, but you can turn them off. Screensaver, the default is 60 minutes. You can turn it off completely, um, or you can set it to 15, 30, or 60 minutes. Screensaver is just if you power the radio up and you don't touch any controls on the radio, after this time elapses, the screen will go to black. Um, and then touching any key or button or touching the screen will bring it back. But this is a screensaver, and actually... I left mine at the default, and I'm going to actually turn that off because I really don't want my screen going off. You really, you know, with an LCD screen, screensaver is sort of a holdover from the CRT days. Um, opening message, um, the default is on, and we'll have to power the radio down to see this, so we'll power it off. And then when we power it on... You get the opening message and your call sign if you've programmed it. And then let me do that one more time and we'll cover the next function here as well. You'll notice that when you power it on, I get the opening message and very quickly it shows the RF power setting. It showed it as 5%. And if you notice, there it is, 5%. So if I have it set to 35%, then when I power it up it's going to tell me that my power is set to 35 percent so that's just when you're turning the radio on if you want to know whether you're set to full power or you know power off or um whatever level you are that i find that kind of handy just so when i know it reminds me what i had the power set to if i'm gonna go right in and start working uh working somebody or if i want to tune up and i don't want it set high so if I turn the opening message off, I'm going to skip my, my call for a moment here, and power on check to off, and then we'll take a look at those. So obviously, again, I don't think any surprises here. If I turn both of those off, when you power it up, it just comes directly to the normal display and skips those messages. Again, you know, personal preference, not really a lot of difference. I'm not sure unless you, you know, needed to turn the radio on and in an emergency needed to key the mic up and start talking within, you know, one second earlier, I suppose it could help. My call, we covered this, I believe it was either episode one or two. Um, you can program your call or whatever other text you want when the radio powers up. Um, in that box so that when and if you have the display sorry the opening message turned on then that will get displayed along with the ICOM 7300 logo let's continue on down and then the final item we're going to look at tonight is the time set and when you set the time um, it uh, asks you to set the date and the time um, so you've got the time that you want set in there, and then it also asks you for your UTC offset. Now, let me just look again. You'll notice I have this set. It's 8 p.m., 8.08 p.m. here, Sunday evening. And let's get all the way back out, and the display is showing 8.08 p.m. So the display displays in the local time that you have set. One feature that... and I've got to double check, but I don't think this is actually in the manual anywhere. If you touch the time, it brings up the clock and shows you your local time, which is displayed, and your UTC time. And it also shows the seconds. So that's just kind of a handy feature. And I'm going to use my finger here to show you that even if you kind of fat finger it, you can still get it to work, even though it's up in the little corner of the display there. So little handy feature if you just touch the time it will show you your local and UTC time so that's uh, kind of a nice feature and that's the reason that it asks you the UTC offset and that's all we're gonna cover with the display settings for this evening so quick uh, run through there hope you found it helpful well that's everything for this time Please keep your comments, questions, and corrections coming. 
Always happy to see those. If you're enjoying the series, please consider subscribing. You can do that by clicking the little button that will pop up on the lower right of the video at the end. And as always, thanks for watching Ham Cured Smoke.